I'm Brandon. And I'm Jesse. We're We're Cannabis Cannabis School. School. Having cannabis-infused conversations with everyday people, cannabis companies, celebrities, and your mom. Welcome to to the the sesh. Sesh. Hey, guys. Welcome back to the sesh. Yeah, we invite you back here. We hope you love this beautiful grandma couch. Yeah. It's very awesome. Super Uh, classy. Yeah, and uh, today... We thought we'd give you a little bit more insight in our heads. So we'll have every once in a while you'll see these sessions come up where it's just us having high thoughts. Just a sesh between Brandon and Jesse. Yeah, today so, we are smoking on Super Lemon. Super Lemon G. Super Lemon it's G. It's a Betty Wellness strain. Yeah, it's a it, very uh, caffeinated strain. It's beautiful. And before we get into today's episode... We just wanted to take a quick th- minute to thank everyone who helps support the show. Yeah. We're jumping over from Patreon over to Buy Me a Coffee. You can actually buy us a joint, and the link will be down below. So you can help support the show, help us reach more people like you. You can do something simple like just buying us a joint. Yeah. We'd really appreciate it. So go ahead over there down to the link below. Go ahead and help support the show and spark up for another conversation, right? And if you can't donate, you can always leave a review, share it with a friend. Dude, go to Apple. Just do that. Write out something. Even if you don't agree with us, please do it. Well, and if you go back to, because like, you know, it was a a really interesting discussion I had with somebody because they were talking about, you know, biblical text and how it was really hard for them to remember and they wrote it 500 years down. But you have to remember, too, that they were a society just like the Native Americans were. And they did, they repeated the exact same stories over and over and over. And it went through lineage. And so they remember it to a T. There were monks that knew the Bible front and back. There are Muslims that know their Quran well, they from front study to it back. From but it, the day thing and... is, is where did it come from? It wasn't written down right away because yeah, but they still had to study it. They no, but... didn't learn it. No, no, no. Back. They didn't study anything because most of them didn't learn from reading, reading are, and writing. Are you talking about now or then? Then. Oh, no, I thought yeah. you were talking about now. No, 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 no. I'm talking about then, because we were talking about ancient texts, and, and I was like, you know, we, we can't of save those stories, because only a few people could read and write. Right, because so it was only left for what? All the, they had was a story. And they would repeat it all the time. Yeah. Your well, memory, it's a telephone game. Yeah, but it, but not even then, because it's not even telephone, because if it's repeated over and over and over and over and over and over and over the exact same way, if you talk to Jews, they're able to go through everything yeah, in their but verbatim. You telling the same story. Do you and your wife tell the same story identical? No, I understand where That's you're going. Saying. I understand where you're going from. But if if it's look not into identical, it. it's similar. It's no, it's going to be pretty spot it's on back similar. then. That's no, what we I'm have saying. we have more distractions in our life to be able to to make it harder. If you think about, they had better memory than we did. Look at the school system in the United States when it started. It wasn't for manufacturing no. it was just to get an education it was yeah yeah and it was shorter the kids were smarter they oh, yeah. wrote better they they were more intelligent yeah, if you read the writings from back in 1800s and stuff yeah they're eloquent they're well spoken and they are actually like coherent thoughts you look at writings from 20 years ago and you're like what the fuck is this person saying? or even today you know it was like that comedian he's like you know you take a letter from a civil war kid to 14 years yep. old to your modern day soldier, the modern day soldiers is like, Dear Marie, it is hot as fuck out here because I'm in the dessert. Yeah. <laughs> it's exactly. hard to fight these sand monkeys when your balls are stuck to your legs. <laughs> and that's that's like what we are now. We are a dumbed down version. We, but tru- we truly I, I are. I still think, and that's what I'm saying, is not that the stories are identical, but just the same as telephone or your story is slightly different. Well, of course. That it's the same as every religion. You look and you're like, okay, there's a lot of similarities. These no, stories are similar, but there's like just but, slight. But the funny thing is, is that we have no idea what happened back then. Like no, that's just my thought and idea. Alive. But yeah. nowadays we rely upon experts. And the funny yeah. thing is that the experts <laughs> yeah. are uh, the little Japanese guy or Neil deGrasse Tyson. Uh, they're theoretical scientists. They've never fucking applied any of this. They're really good at memorizing shit and they're, advanced in math that's it and they always say well math is the ultimate language but i i don't know what that means maybe but 
is that just because it's the only thing that's universal that we know? Right, and and their uh, idea like, is to be able to go, okay, well... That it can be found and utilized <coughs> in everything. Maybe that's right. why. Well, that's what they and, think. And across every language, people utilize some type of math. Well, so they, I mean, that's why. They They're recently like, discovered, um, the Sumerians had, uh, had been, were really good at trigonometry. Were really good at trigonometry, even back then. And they found... Well, I'm, I'm very curious on and shit. what all of their math and science and everything that they knew, because even like we've talked about in, and many theorists in that talk about, or they go out and see these ancient civilizations who have replications and buildings and things that we can't create. Right. Things they've done with stone, we have no idea. And well, it's like, what were they utilizing? What methods, what math, what science, what... Um, Oh my God! What machinery? Alchemy? What alchemy did they understand that we don't? What yeah? What machinery or technology did they utilize that we don't have? Right. I mean, it, it's like looking at the pyramids and hearing from all those people who have been there, studied it so much. Like it's built like a power plant, where it could be yeah. able to provide wireless energy to those individuals. Because the fact is, you don't have burn marks in there from torches. Like any of you see in the spaces, they're fucking perfect all the way up. That's incredible right? how they've done that. And and when you look at some of these other other things, like what's that one in India? It's like fucking carved right out of the mountainside. Oh, and that giant beautiful palace. Yeah, but it's got like elephants and shit like that. My friend's been to it. I'm not sure what it Are is. Are you kidding? Because they don't let he anybody go there anymore. So he he's a videographer and that, and he yeah, travels yeah. and he does drone shots and that all over the world. And I remember him taking like videos and stuff. It was insane. But these things are gorgeous, incredible works. And you're like, how is this done? Because the crap that we're now in is like cookie cutter, shitty square boxes. Well, I mean, that's another thing, no too, No detail, man. No, no creation, no, like, creative design put into it for the most part. Just horrible. I, I mean, when you look at all of these ancient civilizations and what they did, like this one, dude. You see all these carvings? I'll take oh, some screenshots wild. and put them up on the wall uh, on on the screen right now. But, dude, that's done out of out of a fucking mountainside. Here's that's a crazy insane. thing. There's a giant palace there, and the reason why they closed it down to the public is because people kept trying to fucking take rock out of it. Like I don't understand that. Destroying I mean, something so you can have a piece of it. So. I don't understand the destroying thing, but I was going to, it's this weird little side tangent because grandpa passed. And when he passed, I got a lot of his rocks from all over. Well, he had a stone from Auschwitz. He had a stone from the Great Wall of China. Dude, that's cool. He had a stone from like the Berlin Wall. He has stones from all of these, thi I guess I have these stones from all of these places. Now, are they stones that were broken off no they're not that type of some person to destroy something but is it a piece of stone that was on the ground broken already you know and how many people see that and it's just well that's that's okay i'll take it yeah and that happens all the time and it sucks to see people destroying these things like um i was blown away uh all the italian videos that i see you see like um vinci no, not Vinci. You see, um, oh my gosh. I, I have no idea. I've never been to Italy. So, that's okay. The The one main city, and I can't think of what it's called right now, but it has all of the waterways. The Italian job was done in there. Oh, um, uh, Venice. Venice. Oh my gosh, yeah. So, Venice. I haven't been to Italy, though. Okay. So, I've only been to Italy once. No, no, I thought it was really cool. No, I mean, I totally... I know. You've traveled all over with military and yeah. done all of that. No, no. But I didn't get to go to that side. That that was always really fast because their ancient civilizations are so cool over there. Oh, yeah. Like, I walked through the catacombs in France. That was insane. Just miles of, like, skeleton bones. The walls, like, everything is just built up of Fucked skeletons. Fucked up, right? But then, so, Italy. I went to Venice, and we're walking around Venice, and all the videos, all the pictures you always see of Venice are gorgeous. The buildings are clean. They look amazing. We went out there and we're walking all these beautiful bridges that cross covered in graffiti. Yep. Just ruin. And I'm like, 
these beautiful ancient historic buildings are just treated like shit by people nowadays. And it's like, um, I was glad that I got to go and see Notre Dame before it actually burnt. Yeah. Because now it's it's never going to be the same. No matter what they build back will not be the original Notre Dame. Nope. The same artwork, the same stuff. It's just not there. Well, and you know, that's the thing, like, even though these 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 structures are amazing, when you think of it compared to like Saxe Woman in South America, like in, I think it's in Peru, and or no, it could be anywhere somewhere else. I know that in Peru is Machu Picchu, and when you talk about that, like the graffiti back then to those amazing monuments was that whoever else came be- after, because the Mayans discovered it, yeah, it was already it built. Was there. It yeah. was already there. And if you look at these monolithic rocks where they call it cyclopean um, masonry, because the way they fit together, there's no mortar and it just sits on top of each other at these perfect angles. And you can't even slide a needle in there. Like it's so they perfect. Are such a perfect fit. It's like Saxe Woman. They have these like crazy, like they try to say that, like, oh, they use chisels and hammers. <laughs> Motherfucker, you right. couldn't get that shit done with a laser that well. You could yeah. do it with the laser these days. But yeah. the thing is they don't they don't find like that Indian plow, palace I, I, I was talking about. And again, I'll I'll find the picture and we'll put it up at during that time. It's absolutely carved out of the side of a mountain. It has walkways, intricate carvings all over this entire thing. They don't know where the rock like because they usually have a dump site. Yeah, and there's no there's no. no excavation site. There's no like removal, and it was tons and tons. And they're like to move that would take forever, and it would be massive. So there's no excavation, and they're like, how do they create these things? How do they do this without having that? It doesn't make sense in the world that we exist in, right? In the and reality that, that we know. That's why, like, man, like, and and this is a high thoughts video, guys. The thing I think about is that we've done this all before. And I'm talking like stuff like this, but just in a different way. Because when they, you know, as a child, I tried to wrap my mind around dinosaur bones. The concept? No, 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 no. How they got so deep. So the idea was at least what was taught to me in school during that time. And I am old er. Uh, but it was pretty much that it just sunk down over time because of rain and all that other stuff, and it eventually just seeped into the ground. But then you take something like this, like here's just the idea of it. You take a quarter, and you put it into the sand on the shoreline, and the waves come over, what happens? It goes down, and another wave comes over, and it goes further down, and it just keeps going down because of the water. I truly believe that the uh, I well, as far as the evidence that has been what we've seen brought forward is that the Younger Dryas period actually happened. Well, there's been and massive shifts, flooded the planet, and then it went back down because it was such a massive amount. But there's been multiple times, even yeah. so. You go up to the Utah Natural History Museum, and they have uh, just a place that shows here's the water levels that have been. Over the different periods. Oh, yeah. And the areas in even just Utah alone have been flooded, not flooded, flooded, not flooded, flooded, not flooded, that it's been a mass multiple times. Yeah. And so you think about that because when you were saying that, I'm like, yeah, I don't understand unless there's vibrations. You think about that. If you set something on the ground, something big on a flat surface or on sand, on dirt, on whatever. Right. If it vibrates, is it going to go up or down? Is it down? And yeah. wh- but how many vibrations does that have to do? And is it constant? Like in order for that to fluctuate and get down to that level yeah. versus the concept of water, like you said, and it goes back to even like, um, like I'm not religious, but biblical times and the story of the great floods or that. And those stories have been told across multiple things. Yeah. And Generations. it was the, the thing that kind of, um, made me think more about that was the uh, Sphinx cat in Egypt. Yeah. Because for the longest time, they thought the 
it was wind erosion yeah, across the back water until they realized it was water. Yeah, because like, Robert Shock had said that because he went there as a... Yeah, as a, but they're yeah. like, the last time that happened was 10, 12,000 years ago. So Could you imagine 10, 12,000 years ago, we had enough water to to do that. And so is that saying, like, how many times has that happened? How many cycles? Because well, it, most of what we live in is just cyclical. Exactly. And, and that's something that I think is... It's not, you can't get it down to an exact science, but knowing that this planet goes through cycles and purges and there's no rhyme or reason. You can't control the flow of water because you have a machine. Yeah. The oceans move where they move based on heat and cold. And how does that shit work? You know what I was thinking? So I, I went up, um, you remember we had that crazy wind storm like a week ago, two weeks ago? Oh, yeah. Um, I went up and actually rode the Alpine Loop like the day after. Oh, yeah, and your mom's scooter. Yeah, uh, yeah I took yeah, my yeah. kid because they were heading back to Texas. And I was like, you know, I don't have a motorcycle. This is an amazing ride. Let's go do it while you're here. And as I was riding, I saw so many trees and bushes and things that were blown over. And I was thinking about it, and I was like, man, Mother Nature is the best, like, uh, survival Maybe. of the fittest. Yeah. It wipes away the weak. It only keeps the strong, whether it's plants, animals, people like it is the ultimate decider of just what happens right fire cleans trees it cleans land it allows for new stuff new growth to come in because it's been what overgrown with dead stuff for so long and like this is literally mother nature cleaning itself taking care of itself going yeah okay this is how we do shit well and you look at there's certain places you, if you go online you can find like I found this place in Mexico where it was completely desolated and all of these people all they did I mean there was no water no nothing um really it was just like dried out and dead and they brought in animals and grazing animals and they did a little bit of it there and they tried to be able to find water but did that thing within 4 or 5 years completely transformed all green, all that other stuff. So a lot of it, I'm not even saying like, you know, the when we have controlled like agriculture the way that we have, it's, I think that has had a bigger impact on the planet than our 100%. cars. You think about it and like how much water control do we do? How much did the water just naturally flow everywhere and yeah. help things grow? Now we put it in rivers and channels. We put it in like, Dude, it's like all the these Hoover pipes. Dam. Yeah, and all of our dams. Well, this tiny pond that all this water was dispersed in way more places, well, now it's not. We've got all of this water stored here and all of this water stored here. Not yeah. natural occurring lakes and that, which were probably all over the place. Now we got man-made ones that control our water, force it to stay in certain locations, and, and that's fine because it creates power in certain sources. And right now, that's a source, that's a, a utility, that's a thing that we use all the time. Yeah, and in Utah, you know, the funny thing is we were known for our winters and lots of water. Yeah. And then we went through like a 10-year super drought. Crazy, hardly any snow. But that's, again, you know, when you talk about cyclical, that has happened multiple times. Oh, yeah. And, you know. Same with global warming stuff. It's been yeah, like the water raises and, down, and that. Yeah. And I'm curious about that because I, I obviously don't, I don't ignore the fact that maybe, like, we probably play some factor in that. However... Oh, yeah, no. I mean, in uh, the... In, uh, in the overall in scheme... In your environment. Yes. But, like, in the overall scheme, what is the percentage that we have affected the patterns and cycles that were already happening? Yeah. You know, and going, okay, did we speed it up? Maybe. But how much? Because is at that point, we've seen that these happen. These yeah. cycles happen. So then it's like, okay, was it sped up before by something else? You know, is it something that just happens because as it gets through this stage and it starts getting further and further? Well, obviously something's increasing. So either something drastically changes that kills that or it continues until it gets bad enough that it dies. Honestly, what I, one of the big things, and I introduced you to this years and years ago, I think it was like five, six years ago, um... I found that YouTube channel just Adapt 2030. No, no, Adapt 2030 was funny. Okay. <laughs> Do you remember the episode? I, I totally sure remember what you're talking about because yeah, it, I, I thought it was funny because they were showing 
volcanic activity underneath the Antarctic ice shelf. And they saw these big holes appear. And then climate activists and, you know, believers that our dirty cars are melting the ice, um, he put in there, he like, what a bunch of ice holes. And I thought that was <laughs> hilarious or sometime. And then I brought it over. We had your, like, fucking projector up yeah. there, right? That's how you watch TV, play video games. I used to. Yeah, and it was, uh, it was still pretty cool, dude. I love that. It was a great memory. But it, it, I showed you that, and then we got into it. And then I... I found Ben Davidson at, with uh, Suspicious Observers, yep. right? Anything we're talking about, if we've got a YouTube link, we'll send it. We'll put it down below. But uh, Suspicious Observers, Ben Davidson, he's not a, a weird alarmist. He's just like... he, he An used... in-depth scientist who studies the yeah. sun and sunspots and solar arcs and everything I around think that. I I. I am more he, leaning towards that, that the well, sun has more of an effect on our planet yes. than anything else. Well, and he's even gone into it of like, it's been funny because he's corrected NASA and NASA has actually put his stuff in because they're yep. like, oh shit, we were wrong. You know what? He was a lawyer. What? Yeah, no way. He was a lawyer. And he started to learn about this and now he's on the level of scientist. Oh, he's brilliant. He doesn't have like a yeah. PhD or anything like that, but he's brilliant. And one I of the would wager he knows more than some of those PhD. Oh, and we totally see that does. in the fact well, that he's discredited NASA in some of their The only that, thing like yeah. some of the stuff he's talked about like um the Adam and Eve story. Remember that book? Yeah. I and do. and they were saying like oh the CIA had classified it, but here's well, it the it was on the banned list book for a long time yeah try and remove it but, but then it i i, it still I found another guy that actually went through it and that's actually wrong you could buy it the only right. reason they they redacted certain pages yeah they changed it they right. pulled out some portions but, of it but the, yeah. the guy chan thomas he was also a little bit he was pretty off his rocker now i like a lot of his theories on how the earth could have done that what what he talked about is that there was a magnetic reversal and the magnetic reversal kicked off where shift. Yeah. Well, but, but the, at that time, the, the idea was that. Oh, it was a polar shift reversal where the poles yeah, flip, flip and yeah. it changes the world. The, the theory is it changes Instantly. the world and all of this magma that's kind of underneath just the, below the surface, it would sh unlock the um, fucking continents, and they would be able to move. Oh, I thought it was either the continents or the water. And basically oh no no no, it would be like water. one of those would move and flood most. A yeah, lot the, of the ocean. World. Well, if you a think about of the world. they, I don't know how. Fa let's look that up. How fast is the Earth rotating in miles per hour? I got you. Yeah. Hey Siri, how many miles per hour is the Earth rotating? Approximately a thousand miles an hour. So if if we're spinning at a thousand miles an hour, and you're right, and thank you for correcting me on that. Uh, if we're spinning at a thousand miles an hour, and the theory is, is that when that happens, that it's kind of going to stop everything. It's going to slow down the rotation of the Earth. Yeah. Everything else, the Would clouds, continue. the water, is still moving at a thousand miles an hour. Yep. So as soon as that happens, you slow it down, just like slamming on the brakes of the car. And he only needs to slow down a little bit for this to happen. And it's been gradually slowing down. Also, the sun, if, if from when I was growing up, and he was right, it was the weirdest thing when he said, he goes, look at the sun and tell me it's not different today than it was yesterday, back in... 20 years ago because I've, I used I thought to they remember said, don't stare at the sun a yellow sun it was a yellow sun now it's bright white and the reason why is and they've already seen this it's degraded uh, I think it's at 40% interesting is the magnetosphere has degraded around the uh, our earth or around the... around our earth okay. so because of the rotation oh, huge 40% huge. 40% up to around now 40% left or 40% degradation degradation that's, it's still massive either way. Well, if you think about it, too, because we just had six solar flares come off the sun not too long ago. And well, they happen from all the time. All the, but they don't get to see them in Puerto Rico. 
Oh. It went all the way down to Puerto Rico. Is we could see it here in we Utah. we had the, the lights in the sky? Aurora Borealis all mm-hmm. over? Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. See, that's, what it is is when the solar flare hits our Earth's magnetosphere, it's like a force field, but the solar winds bend, push bend, over it and yeah. they bend. And as those, the, the radiation particles, all that other fun shit, right? I, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not smart. Yeah, a scientist. But uh, okay. it, they hit both poles. Because of how it comes out in these arcs like this, Interesting. and that protects us, and then it folds over. But as it gets smaller and smaller, it doesn't protect us. When in the uh, mid eighteen hundreds, early eighteen hundreds, they had the Carrington event, yeah, and Which that was a class now. ten yeah. solar flare. And dude, miners woke up in the middle of the night because they thought it was morning. It was like two or three a.m. And it was as bright as the day. And that was in the middle of the night. And it was so strong that it fried those things. And the crazy thing was like the air was so charged with electricity that their telegraph machines, which were unplugged, were still able to communicate over to London. That's insane. Right? So it, that's what, like, what Tesla was thinking about is creating that type of energy for everyone. So it's endless. So everything in this room and these cameras... They didn't have batteries. You just created them, and they worked. And they weren't plugged in, and it just got power. Like, yeah. have you ever seen, like, late 1800s, early 1900s, like, fucking um, inventions? Like, the World's Fair. Crazy shit. You know, like, that big... I was looking at video games last night. Borderlands 3. Okay. Yep. Uh, I was looking at that, and they had this... This g- car thing in there that's a giant wheel that goes around you. And yeah, you see. do. That was back then. They had those. They had some of the craziest, so just a super imaginative shit. Oh, it's so interesting. And you think about that because how much stuff wasn't really created in our era back then. So it was interesting because it was all of this new creations that didn't exist at all. I think that there needs to be more of these inventors. Because you think about the Wright that brothers. What works, were the Wright brothers? That works when we're not in this industrial age where everyone's doing the shit we're doing. Because you're just doing it to make it better. Yes. And they all spent their time thinking, creating, doing, building. All of these. Like, it was the eloquent time. They were smart. They were well-written. They thought. How many of us actually sit back and allow ourselves to get bored and think? Dude, that's so funny you brought that up. Because... Um, this fucking thing. Yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. bored. And well, I know let me you pull out my way. phone. Oh, hey, I'm bored. Let me go play a game. Hey, I'm bored. I'm going to like go watch a show. It, it, there's always something that is, hey, there's something that I need to be doing. We don't sit back often and allow ourselves to just be and think yeah. and get bored. Because I think that's when a lot, a lot of these ideas and theories and, and things come in. And that's when we have discussions because we're not, well, if you're not worried about well, I'm bored. I need to go watch something. I need to do this. Well, maybe I'm bored. I want to go have a discussion. My neighbor's out. I'm going to go talk with him. Yeah. You know, how many people had it's a good point. group discussions and that? And how many of these things were truly discussed? Of like, this shit is a problem. How do we solve this? Versus nowadays, how many of us sit back and go, we've got a lot of problems. We just don't know how to solve them. So well, I guess that'll be someone else's problem. That's a good point. I'm going to go back to scrolling. The <laughs> how many problems could we actually solve if we stop scrolling through TikTok every day? Well, how many problems if we, stopped... we not have? Exactly. Right. And like mental health problems, all oh, of these other so struggles from that. And it's like, okay, what what better life could we le- live if we weren't stressed about that? But you know, what more creativity would we have? Yeah, we might not work as many nine to five jobs because it's like, well, I created this idea. And this idea mm. solved a problem. And that problem, well, when you solve problems, what does that do? That brings you massive amounts of revenue. So you don't have to worry about working some stupid nine to five because, well, you've solved a problem. Uh, it's the thing. Like, I mean, if you can create uh, and Yeah. No, you just I mean, don't. You just can't. And that's, I've been doing that lately. I've been intentionally like, dude, I was going to the store. That's all I was doing. And I'd had a really good strain. I was really deep in my thoughts. 
And uh, it was that mix of magic and love affair. Oh, okay. Yeah. And love magic or magic love. Magic love. There you go. Magic love. <laughs> it was really introspective. And I've been, I've had this mental block for what I've become very passionate about. And, you know, I had a cool experiment working with a client. Um, I've been doing marketing for a long time and sales for a long time, but I just, I wanted to do something different, but this, this kind of found me on accident. And then I started to do well. And then I worked with this company and we saw amazing success with their employees. Like they just did really well. And I'm like, you know, I want to go past that. And then I got involved with 12 shapes with Kim Giles. And then like now I'm like certified as a coach under it there. I'm on their website and all that stuff. Wow. Like to me, that's cool because now yeah. I have an opportunity to that's be able cool. to help people. And one of the biggest things that she said, she goes, you know, you'd be great with couples and um, you really should be helping focus. She goes, I have so many couples that I am booked out for the next six months. <laughs> Probably. And it's just so crazy, dude. It's I like, feel like, and I think we even talked about this. Once you reach like a certain financial status and that, your focus isn't, hey, I'm stressed. I need to make this money. It's, okay, what do I have going on in my life? But you have Wh to have what do that. I need? Yes. You have to have a purpose. Remember that cool video? I showed you that guy where he's just like, you know what you do when you get a lot of money? You fucking take care of your family. And yeah. you, you, you take, you, you your retire friends, your parents. You do this shit, buy them a house. Yeah, do this. You take your friends on a trip and that. And, and then, then you, you give, give it, it away. away. Yeah. Like, because why so do you need more. this extra money, these you billionaires? Don't. Like, what are you doing with this money? Honestly, what are you doing with those billions of dollars? It just reminds me of Bennett, because Bennett's yeah. goal was to hit a million dollars. He gets $10 million, and he's like, now what? Yeah. It didn't feel any different to him. No. Nope. It was the same thing with uh, one of the founders of Twitch. And when okay. Twitch sold, I think it's owned by Microsoft. Uh, when Twitch sold, um, instantly he was like, I think he was a billionaire because of how much they sold it for. And all the, all the owners got that. Right. Yeah. And, uh, imagine the employees there that had stock options. Like they were, they're fucking set. Yeah. Right. But he was like, it was really cool. Like I've got all of this money, all of this like perceived power. And dude, he's just like three days. I, I felt bad. I didn't, wasn't doing anything. How, how, empty would it feel to be in this giant fucking house walking around you got all the coolest shit marble oh yeah fucking just awesome you've got cooking shit in your in your kitchen and it's hanging on the wall and you never use it because you got somebody else that prepares your meals right you get to the point where you're not even driving your own car because it's you can do more by being able to pay attention to the things you need to do and then you wake up on a Saturday. But why do you do that? Exactly. Because Be the money it's perceived is power. the value. Yeah. And so your moment is, well, I could do this. I could drive this car. Or I could make more money if I am doing this. Yeah. Because no one chooses that because it's, well, I, I'm choosing this choice to do this work all the time and have someone else do this because I'm happy. Yeah. Most of those people you don't see and they're like fulfilled and and truly joyful on their inside. No. They're the ones still struggling, having mental health issues, having like struggles with self-worth and value of like, what the fuck do I do? Or, hey, I've hit this goal, but now I feel unachieved because now I've hit it. So what's my next goal? I'm not there. What do I need to be at? Like, how do I get there? And then never feeling like you're enough then because There's you're no always chasing another goal. Well, if you think about it, dude, like, you know who I envy in ways? are people that can create with their hands. They okay. They create things and fix things and do things like that. Or you do that shit all the time. I know, but I'm saying like, you know what's really sad is there's a lot of inventions today to make our, our lives, you know, easier. Yes. But they're not anything. They're not real. They're not tangible. We're all about convenience. But we're, yeah. you know. But there's, but when, you know, like, what? Well, who does po pottery now? People as hobbyists back yeah. then, it was not only like their livelihood, but they also were so good with it that it lasted for hundreds of years. Yeah. 
Well, but that's how you had a master's. And people would master these skills because... True definition of master. Yes. And it's like, okay, what mastery of skills do we have? Well, I know how to respond to emails. I know how to make calls. I know how to do this. Okay. But what skill do you have? Well, I know how to do... I, you know, and it's like going down your job resume. Well, I've got these. Okay. But like... Who what do you I? have? Like, And that's where, like, honestly, like, you've said this many times. Brandon's got a great habit. He... His phone goes in another room at night, and he lets it charge over there. I didn't always have that. No, no, and and I'm I I I think about it every night because I got that fucking thing in my ear, thinking that I need that, and I don't need it. And I'm gonna try it tonight. I'm gonna try it tonight and put it like just whatever. Yeah. Right. And it, it, I'm just gonna leave it over there, and I'm gonna see how I do with it. Uh, I've been thinking about it. Like I don't read as much as I like read 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 words yeah. not just listen to a book and yeah we don't allow ourselves to get bored and we don't allow creativity like I said like I'm I'm now doing coaching I didn't even think about couples yeah I didn't think about it individuals but Kim really pushed me she's like she's like hey you got a gift here you should use this you can connect with people really quickly this is going to help and I started thinking about that too and I'm like you know what I'm you're you're my best friend. I talk to you all the time. Every fucking yeah. day almost, right? Just and if we don't, we're just like we're just weird. super busy that day. Yep. Yeah. Like when I was going through my shit, like it was weird for you because you're like, fuck, he's not even talking to me. Yeah, but I didn't want to call you and bother you either because I knew that like everything was just could push you into an, a panic attack at that moment. Because life was like it was overwhelming. And that happens. Like that happens to so many of us. And the last couple of years have felt that way. Honestly, like yesterday, um, two days ago, there was something I had to do and it was stupid. I literally had two emails I had to send. That was it. Two emails. And I woke up and I felt overwhelmed. Wow. And I was like, fuck. And I sat down and I took a pu couple of hits and I was like, why am I feeling this way? It's not that much. It's literally like two emails that I have to get done. But it was just like the response that I hadn't figured out. I wasn't sure what to say. And I was like, okay. It kept me up the whole night before. I literally was like tossing and turning, thinking about these fucking emails. And so I'm sitting there and I'm like, this is just the life that sometimes it doesn't always happen. Like that's not every day. But we have those days and it's horrible. And so yesterday I sat down and I've just started um, recording for another podcast. Yeah, yeah. And that's been sitting in Spotify for like two years because my mental health wasn't okay and didn't really think I could do that. And I recorded four episodes yesterday. Yeah, dude, I'm super proud of you because I know you've been talking about this for a while. And because it's a mental health podcast, I actually recorded two meditations as well. So I did six episodes yesterday. Um, Good for you, dude. In one day. And I was like, I actually felt really, really fucking accomplished with that. And I was like, I don't normally do this, but it's because I've been thinking about it. And these, uh, like the guy that I send you videos on sometimes. I, yeah. Um, Alex Harmozy. And, and you were talking about it and you're like, man, he's just, he's like a go, 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 go. And, and I was listening to one of his videos because he was like, oh yeah, you know, I we just made like 3 billion or like whatever it is. And now my next goal is like 10 or something. I'm like, he's still chasing these things. <laughs> his goal isn't, but, but his goal is not always the goal. He still has his goal, but his goal is the process and the work. And I was like, okay, so who am I? What do I do? Okay, well, if, if I'm a podcaster, if I'm doing that, well, what do I need to do? What does a day-to-day -day look like in that? And I was like, well, that looks like this. And I started just trying to create my process of I don't need to be successful. I don't need to be this, like... I don't need Good for you. I don't need happy because my problem was this show has been fantastic. We reached the number one cannabis podcast in three months. Yeah, we've and held we've that. Held it the entire. We've time. We've been in like top ranking all over the all over the world. We've held in like the top 150, 100 alternative health. And so I thought of like, what if this next show isn't that? What if this next show doesn't get to that? And I was like, who who, who cares? Do we didn't make this show for that reason? No. And but I didn't think about that when I was starting this one. And no. my concern was like, what if it's not what people need? Okay, well, what if it's what I need? 
What yeah. if truly that is what I need right now? That's a good point. Because I think there's a lot of podcasters out there, people who want to start a podcast, and they're putting it out there. It's a really good way for you to be able to work through things. Like I've I've started I I started recording on another one. Yeah. With uh, the Kim. twelve shapes. Yeah. Yeah, twelve shapes, and it's all about teaching about communication, relationships, and dating, and all these other things that can be able to be applied quickly and see results but it's it's more of just it's giving it away like hey you could listen to this and learn some things and the funny thing is is like we've been recording i think i've got like eight or nine episodes in the mm -hmm. tank and for some reason i just can't Pull the create the no 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 i mean i looked at the time period and when it launches and stuff like that like we've got a good idea and she's got a marketing team that's doing all this shit for us but ultimately like i was just like yeah you know this is cool uh but uh i've had so much stuff going on in my life that it's i've started noticing like what is keeping me from being able to push forward and it's allowing myself to get distracted yeah. and i need to put this away i need to be able to be bored i need to think and it was awesome because that day oh my god so adhd um I'm going right back to where I left off like forever ago. So when I went to the store after I got high on Magic Love or Love okay. Magic, right? yep. I think Love Magic's better. Uh, I was walking in the store with no headphones. I haven't done that. In, I don't. It was really strange to me. But I was such in an elevated state that I could almost like put earmuffs on. I didn't hear very much of the world. And I was talking to myself in my thoughts, going over ideas, and then everything came to me because I allowed myself to be bored. These ideas, these blocks that we have, I was able to just, it was like a flood. Everything came to me. The name of what I want to call my, you know, my practice and how I work with people. Like all of it came to me and I remembered it all because I have that kind of memory. Like I'm not smart. I just, really good at memorizing you have a brilliant shit. memory yeah and oh you're smart well yeah but i mean in certain ways but i i just think i i can always be smarter i don't just like you said about being rich like i don't ever want to feel like that uh, i think it's the interesting thing is and maybe you feel this same way um the more information that i learn the more stuff i study the more things that come into my mind the dumber I feel, the the more I realize that I know really like nothing. But that's the thing too, man. That's I, th I think that's why I went towards what I'm going. Like, why would I even get into this stuff? And I was doing it originally to be a better writer, NLP, studying uh, Chris Voss's system, and and being able to apply all these different things. Just being able to communicate, Market sales, and yeah, yeah all I that just stuff better. I was just trying to get people yeah. to buy shit, and. It worked and it didn't. I mean, it was just a throw up. Yeah. You, well, there's you always never knew. theories and you right. try stuff and, and see what exactly works right. for you and what doesn't. But I feel like I'm more compassionate now. Like I'm nicer to my kids. I I'm, I wasn't always nice to my kids. Like uh, it's not that my parents didn't love me. I know my parents beat the shit out of me. Like when I talk about growing up in in a kind of a violent home, my my parents fought like in their room, but we heard it. Like it was uh, a it was a brawl. I never heard my parents fight. I never saw my parents fight. I saw my mom stand in between my dad and my brother several times, and then I stepped in between. Like, never saw my dad. My dad didn't touch my mom in, like, a physical abusive way or anything. Like, yeah. never heard them fight. So that was never around, but... I, no, I think they feel the same way we feel about our kids. It's just they, you know, there's a difference. When you say it, it's different. You know, I tell my kids I love them all the time. And I don't do that because I'm trying to reinforce in their head. It's because when I see my kid, I love them. Oh, yeah. I love them as I believe that God loves me. Like, just so close. Just immense amount of love. Like, every single one of us has had somebody in our lives. And if you've never had because you've had such a horrible fucking life, I feel so bad for you, and I, I wish you a better future. But I just, I think we were harder, and and we were more conditioned for this world because we, our parents didn't get that. I didn't no, get that. No, my, 
No, your mom definitely didn't do it. Yeah, my mom didn't. My dad, like, my dad feels, I feel like my grandma shows more love um, to my dad than, but his dad did not. Um, And me and him actually talk about that all the time. Uh, Yeah, because he feels it now. Yeah. And he has all of the, like, we have these discussions and that, and it's, it's sad to see, but like we, we've talked about how, you know, that whole elder side doesn't even feel like they really love each other. It's like, uh, oh, we love you. It's like, it's not really family. It doesn't feel like family. It just is like, uh, I don't know, checking a box maybe. Yeah, totally. I, uh, that's interesting. Cause I, that brings up, I saw this podcast with Simon Sinek and, um, you know, I read, you know, Starts With Why and Leaders Eat Last. And those are the two books he's written. And they were cool, but I looked at it from a marketing position before. Yeah. And then I heard him on this podcast and he was talking about that. And he went through something called, uh, like, his big focus is friendship right now because he's like, there's all of these people who are out there who cannot connect. They just cannot connect. We we don't understand. Like, dating has become so weird um and and very difficult like who think dating is difficult like the hardest thing of dating back when you were a kid was like knowing that you have this giant zit that's inside well, your nose and confidence like everyone yeah it's the confidence back then but now dating on like social apps and stuff was weird garbage dude but even then like they do all this interaction but they would rather do it virtually because when they meet each other in person they don't know what to say or how to interact it's weird because yeah. they can they can be quirky and and you know funny themselves on on yep. right yep oh but yeah they can't deliver the tonality they can't understand reading this person over there I mean I struggled with that oh yeah totally. I was super charismatic through text all of that in person I was shy I was really hard to like break that barrier because I wasn't confident I didn't feel that. But if I was at home <laughs> yeah. and I was sitting behind my phone, I could fucking text all day. I could say yeah. whatever I wanted because I was always picked on. I was always this little, short, awkward kid. And so that awkward kid, if I'm standing in front of you, well, I feel short, awkward, and and not confident. So I can't do that if I'm standing there. And for me, when I was growing up, there was no way that existed. Yeah. So that first initial thing was like, it took me so long to get through that or be like, yeah, this is who I am. And then just being a smart ass like <laughs> i just constantly saying stupid shit like being a loud mouth like i just that's what i end up turning into well i mean it's it's just you're a, a victim of circumstance that's all and it's it's, it's my totally coping fine. mechanism you know well and I, <laughs> I that's what i have to remind myself with my kids is i i go yeah but you you probably didn't do really good either and you're just figuring it out and all you need to do is just be there, love them, tell them that you love them and that you're there for them so they can come to you because so many kids won't go to their parents. They yeah. won't talk to them because they don't trust them. They don't feel safe. No, they don't feel safe. And the parent's like, well, I fucking give you food and clothes and a place yeah. to live. Are you calling like, out my ex-wife right now? Uh, well, that's no, the conversation no, no. I've had with my kids of like. Dude, that's like by law. By law, the state requires that you give your child clothing, food, and a place to live. Yeah. That's the well, three requirements. It's just like that's why that's why our parents did that. Yeah. Well, my parents were, you know, we earned our keep. It was like you live here, do this, do this, and that makes sense. You know, I I live in the house, I make a mess, I help clean up because yeah. I live there. That to me, that made sense. I, that's not my. I didn't do that. Yeah, I get that from. My I help mow the lawn because well, I play in the yard. Okay, that makes sense. I'm a kid. We rotate through. We have five kids. Whoop de doo. So you yeah. know, and I think about it. And I'm like, okay. These are the things that just, it was growing up, we didn't get allowance. No, this was part of living here. Why do you get paid for cleaning up yep. your shit? Like, yep. I didn't get paid. So it's, I it would ask weird. for like money, like when I was a kid to go do certain things. And if I was doing all the stuff, my, my dad was cool with it. He's uh-huh. like, yeah, no problem. What do you need? We were really frugal. So we didn't do a lot of that. And it was just, well, we don't need that. That's not needed. And I mean, a lot of, a lot of it wasn't. It was just, 
wants of like, oh, that would be cool. I would like to have that. And yeah, but your parents were really steeped in the culture. Yeah. And the culture is being frugal. Well, and grandma and grandpa were incredibly <laughs> frugal. So, yeah. I mean, they had lots of money. My mom was just super frugal from that. So she was yeah. terrified. That makes sense. That's like, well, that's why Terry spent lavishly because he never yes. had that. My, so there was a story that I learned oh. when grandpa died. Um, something like that was the first time they went to China when I was like eight, my grandpa was going to, they wanted to pull out money, have a bunch of cash to go to China with because they needed, they felt like they needed that. And the bank wasn't going to have enough cash. They weren't going to get to the bank in time. So they went to my mom like, Hey, do you have cash? We need some money. My mom went to, the, and my mom always felt like she was broke. She went to the safe, pulled out $80,000 in cash. $80,000 in cash. <laughs> well, but, I mean, that yeah, sounds like a lot back then. But now it's like. But then, yeah. Yeah, I mean, now it would be amazing. I mean, how well would we be doing right and now? I'm like, Just okay, that. Like, these are the types of things, but it's the fear of like, I don't have enough. I'm not going right? to have enough. And like, grandpa hoarded his money until he died. And then when he died, he donated it to the church. Well, when Grandma died, I don't know if you remember, but he just kind of went through this like very giving stage. Well, he didn't want to manage anything, so they got rid of the apartments. That's when I got this house. That's mm-hmm. when they got rid of everything. Yeah, because they didn't. Grandpa didn't want the headache. He didn't want the hassle. No, and I, mean, I remember having because I used to live across the street from him, right? Yeah. And uh, I had lots and lots of conversations with him for years. And, you know, we would go over things and he, I don't know, one time he just looked at me and he's just like, hey, I hope one day you can be prosperous and make a lot of money, but do me a favor and don't be a miser like me. He's like, I really wish that I could have given more of this away, shared more of it, empowered other people, uh, traveled more. Um, He's like, I just, I felt like we just kept it all there. And he's like, but for what? Yeah. Louise is gone. Exactly. It's like, what What do you do with it now? Yeah. it's. I don't think money is the root of all evil. I think no, money is the root of all distraction from life. I think it's making money your goal is yeah. the root of all evil. Cause well, money, it, it's like idolatry. Ha- like people yes. Having worship money it. isn't a problem. Having money isn't evil. Making money isn't evil. No. But when that is your like whole and that's sole it. focus... I think that's where the evil comes in because you truly, you get rid of relationships, you push people and other things aside, morals, other things, because Your it's the money that's important. Yeah, but I mean, it's a, it, it, I, I remember hearing one podcast where they were talking to this guy and he is a, uh, like a life coach okay. for billionaires. And why he does it is he helps them to mentally face the challenges of being super wealthy. And helping them to let go of, um, you have lots of money, you're not going to die, no one's coming for you, it's okay. And the reason why he could relate to him so well is he was a millionaire, he was a multimillionaire, but he had seen this sickness with all these individuals who don't have the ability to be able to just give themselves a break and understand their new differences. It's like when we were talking with Bennett, like, what you know when I asked him about his uh I asked him about his Tesla. Oh yeah. Yeah and he's he like hates it. Yeah, he's just like he he regrets it. Yeah. And he's just like, I really regret that, right? Because of the cost of the car meant nothing to him. And he's just like, it's ridiculous. Yeah. And he is one of those guys. He is like a fear of loss guy. He he has to keep everything really close. He's very conservative with his money and, and good for him, but what do you make it for? Yeah. What do you make all that money for? What does it do for you? That's it's why, like, you know, my wife and I have struggled, you've struggled. Um, and it's hard, but you know, that's one of the things of doing things on your own is that you're gonna do one of two things. Either you're gonna die poor or you're gonna be able to be successful in something because you put in that time and that effort. Because you really know, like, you think back to being just an employee and then you do an entrepreneurship, like, and I'm not saying one's better than the other one, but pff, God be with you because yeah. it's, it sucks. It sucks. It's hard. Entrepreneur life is tough. Like going from that nine to five secure to like the first, hey, I'm going to jump into this. I'm going to start my own business, go out, do all of this. 
Like that was a whole new thing. And you don't have a whole team of like, hey, no. we're going to do this. We're going to do this. It's like. Or you don't have somebody saying, hey, you got to be here by this time and you can leave at this time and you will get money. Yep. But if you don't do that, you're, yep. you're gone. It's like you will show up at this time and you're going to start working because, well, that's what you have to try and do in order to make money. Right. And you're going to keep working. But because it's your business, you're going to work till 10, 11, 12 at night, one, two, three, four in the morning because. That's like the first time you I got a salary. When I had a salary, oh, um, you were constantly working, always working. Oh, bro! I take calls at eight o'clock at night with clients Oof. who are needing to have their hand held, and or you know discussing the the contract and what they would like, what they don't like, like and and my wife at the time she was we had like three kids, and there no we had four kids, and they were all little, and. She was just like, what the fuck? I'm I'm handling all these kids and you're taking calls at night. Now, I make it a point not to talk to anybody in business after 5 or 6 p.m. unless I'm doing a function. But I just don't anymore. Yeah. And the shitty thing is I, t- I used to talk about work all the time. Oh, yeah. Because that was it. That's the thing. One of the things I've had to kind of do recently... Um, Because I would go work in bed. I would not scroll on my phone, but I would bring my laptop in and I would start working. And then I would keep working until I got tired. And I'm like, I need to not do that. And so the other night I was um, was sitting out here and then it was like 10 o'clock. I'm like, I'm not tired. I can work on Happier Headspace for an hour, hour and a half. So I went and grabbed my laptop and Emily was like, oh, are you coming to bed? I'm like, no. I'm going to go work. And she's like, can't you work tomorrow? And I was like, yeah, I'm also going to work tomorrow, but I'm not going to bed yet. And so I'm going to go work because that's, I don't want to, I'm trying to separate that space and have certain spaces designated for certain things. Like I'm not going to use my phone in bed. I don't want to use my laptop and work in bed. I just like bed is for reading, sleeping and sex. That's, that's like what it's for. Um, and so aside from that, I want to use my other spaces for things like that. You know, Hey, I'm going to work. So I'm going to come sit in the studio and I'm going to work. or I'm going to sit in the office and I'm going to work because that is okay versus trying to take that. And then I can designate and go, Hey, I'm not working right now. Okay. I'm going to just set that aside and go, I will work on that later when I'm doing work time, when I'm in my workplace with work stuff. Instead of going like, I'm going to start doing it all the time, everywhere I'm at, constantly. And it's like, but, but why? Is it because that person needs a response right now? Or I just am worried that if I don't get them a response right now, they're not going to respond if I send it tomorrow Yeah. during business hours? Like, if it's a real relationship, if it's a real business interaction, it's going to happen tomorrow. If and it's that, not, it, it's not going to happen anyway. Right. It's it doesn't not matter change if I do it tomorrow. right now. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And I, if it is, I don't think that's the person I want to do business with because that's not the type of relationship that I want. It's like That's not a life. No. And so if that's the type of engagement, that's not my engagement and you can move on. Like that's okay because I will work with the next person who has the better relationship, who I have that connection with, and they're not looking for a eight, nine o'clock response. They're like, no, be a human. Be with your family. Talk during regular hours. You like, know, what, you know what's funny is that when when we had jobs, and if they called you on your day off or after the hours, I I never answered. Nope. I you're not paying me for this time. This is my time. But that's the funny thing because even when they call you after hours, you're not getting paid for that time either as an entrepreneur. Nope. Like it's all about it, it's about establishing a really good relationship and setting boundaries early. And letting them know, like any other relationship, you set those boundaries, and it helps you to be able to make that relationship stronger. Like yesterday, dude, like I just, I've had a real tough time. Like I I had that client for a while. I knew it was coming to an end. I had a couple other things fall through. And so now, like, you know, both of us, right, we're flat broke. And Beautiful time. Like a lot of you, right? Uh, luckily, we have uh, friends in high spaces. Um, but mm-hmm. yeah, but it, uh, dude, like I, I haven't been pushing forward for my coaching. 
I haven't been pushing that out there. And I just like, you want to help people. Like I do it now. Like, will I be able to make money from it? I absolutely will. Will it take all my time? Nope. You know, I mean, like uh, Kim was saying, she's like, yeah, if you're available Monday through Friday. And I'm like, uh, Fridays I have off. And yeah. she's like, oh, what do you have? I'm like, I do recordings. And, and she's like, oh, okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah. She goes, you just tell all of them saying, yeah, I have a podcast. I do this. Well, it was even like uh, setting up the schedule for Happier Headspace yesterday. And I was like, ooh, I'm going to keep it this wide open. And I'm like, why? Why am I doing that to myself? Why am I allowing everyone to take all of this time of mine instead of just designating it as a specific slot of time? If you want to be on the show, you want to talk, this is the time that we have available. This is when we slot that in. Instead of just giving everyone all of my time, designate it as this time is specific time for this, which allows me to give other time to do things that I need. Yeah, and, it, and we just don't allow ourselves to have that time. And once you start giving it, that's what I love about when I use cannabis, because, you know, from the outside looking in for somebody who doesn't use cannabis, they'd be like, that guy has a problem. The problem is I'm not using enough cannabis. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> but I just, I don't know, man. I, 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 I'm more compassionate. I'm more caring. I'm, I'm more interested. I'm more curious. I'm, I'm allowing my ego to take a sidestep for just a little while. So I can just be, it was like, I was telling you, dude, I was at church with, with my family on Sunday and I hit like five hits off of my pen and I went and I had a great time. My son and I just bonded. I just felt good. I saw people, shook hands, gave hugs. I, every single, uh, church that, you know, when we move, we go to that one. I always tell these people that I love them. And I truly do because I'm trying to get them because they're all about community yet these motherfuckers don't even talk to each other. Yeah, that's that's the thing I hate. And I, like, I've lived in this house for 10 years and the neighbors who have bought, bought the house next door have been the friendliest neighbors I've had. Uh, the ones before weren't bad. But most people don't talk here. They're not friendly. They don't, like, there's no neighborly thing. There, there's no community. And it's like, granted, I'm not part of their community. But even when I was, when I first moved in, I didn't see it. Dude, there's like four houses around me that are not in, in the church at all. And yet nobody talks to each other. So I make it a point when I see them, hey, man, what's up? Because... That's that's how we used to be. Like neighborhoods used to be like they'd have block parties. There's still places like yeah. I think like Pennsylvania and shit like that. They're the places that get these my old cool neighbor places. My old neighbor in my parents' ward uh, growing up, and every year they would throw a big huge block party, probably a couple times a year, and everyone in the neighborhood would come. We'd have a big huge barbecue, fireworks, all this stuff. Yeah, that's cool. And we would do that all the time, but it was just. It wasn't a church thing. It was just a, a neighborhood thing. thing. Yeah, yeah. And there was a few people who weren't religious in the neighborhood who would come because it was just a community. But it was an actual community. And that doesn't exist in a lot of them. And it sucks because those that war, those people were amazing people. A lot of those are still some of the best people that I know are some of those people. Yeah. Yeah, and... Uh... I was just thinking about that because the idea is they they don't ever connect. And I think a lot of times where you may be in like a, a certain type of uh, organized group or an ecclesiastical group, whatever it is, you put on this face when you go there. You're not you. And then yeah. when you see them at the place where everybody's supposed to be prim and proper, right? Yeah. Look <laughs> at me. I have a town. I have a suit. I look respectable. But I don't give a shit about that, and it's funny because there's so much that way, but I find myself, I used to be like, you know, like a super hardcore conservative, don't swear or anything like that, say shucks darn and poo. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Except I say poo online, like That's when I get funny. killed, poo, ah, yeah. oh, poo. <laughs> <laughs> I say that, some guy's like, ah, poo, what the fuck <laughs> are you talking about, man? Fucking people shooting at you, and I'm like. Yeah, man. Uh, poo. 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 <laughs> I don't get mad at games, dude. <laughs> and uh, but oh, where the fuck was I going with this? 
Well, I don't know. Where was I? I don't even remember. <clears throat> Fuck, I shouldn't have smoked that second bowl. That <laughs> <laughs> uh, feels awesome, though. But, anyways, science. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I have no idea. This has been quite the uh, conversation. Yeah. No, it's a good sesh, man. Just sitting here, just Hanging going out, off. And, having a sesh. You know, we, we did this because we were all, wanted to be able to give you a little bit more of how our thought process is. Maybe you got something similar with us that you're like. And honestly, this is a lot like our calls. So yeah, when we have like a, a sesh call. or when we just chat, this is a lot like our discussions. So. Yep. <laughs> every time like this is super real like it just and my adhd of jumping from one topic to another so hey if we talked about something and you were like dude i'd love for you guys to do a whole show on that one hit Let us, us up. Yeah. set us up and if you want to be a guest on here you got something in cannabis you want to talk about you got a cool amazing story like you know you saw it cure something i don't know or or maybe you're just a super interesting story that you have yeah might be fun on the show yeah so go ahead and hit us up over there uh and that's it um so yeah we'll catch you next week